Lost Legacy. And we now have a recap from our resident scribe on what happened last time. Uh, good question. Let me scroll up so I can see the thing I sent Rose. Okay, we collectively went, oh, shit's kind of bad right now, yo, and decided, you know, probably the safest place in the island first right now is probably the Tower with the Demon Ward. Probably the Tower of the Demon Ward. So we headed to the Tower of the Demon Ward. After getting there, we essentially set up, reviewed our options, and went, what's probably the best first step for us to do? In which we split up. Uh, Amaya and Adeline went to check out the Harpies because we had some vague hints that the cultists might be, have been doing something with them, and they're nearby, so, you know, might as well check them out. Uh, Reese and... and Kaoris, yes, that's the name, went to a nearby town to try and gather rumours where they kind of happened upon something a bit more, you know, interesting, but we'll get back to that. Uh, let's see, a bunch of the NPCs scouted around, like, yeah. <laughs> a bunch of NPCs scouted around and didn't find much beyond the barriers and maybe some good places for us to place traps, while some of us stayed at the tower and basically did a bit of research and whatnot. To start with, uh, a man, Adley, managed to rescue a dude from the Harpies and also discovered there's potentially, I think it was an altar to Pazuzu that they were sacrificing people to. Mm -hmm. uh, Karis and Reese discovered that the nearby town was run by a militia and that apparently, well, not run by a militia, but they had a sizable militia presence and that some of us were being, scape we were being used as scapegoats. Basically, someone had been spreading rumors that. Uh, Big old spoopy killers have been murdering people in the nearby towns. I don't know if people were actually murdered because I ended up having to skip away a bit. But yeah, bad stuff for us. Killers and Reese managed to clear our name, and we now have plans to attempt to clear any of the possessed people who we think are in the town slash in the militia. Just to clear it up, um, yes, people were being murdered. Lots of people were being murdered, and someone was disguised as Kelvis while they were murdering. Meanwhile, those of us back at the tower did a bit of um, talking about and research. Uh, Cadme communed with spirits, basically, discovering, you know, people aren't feeling too great right now, but also that there's others in the island who need help, such as, I think it was a bunch of fae children in the nearby moor being uh, currently being dealt with by a priest of probably kind, a cleric of some sort, but, you know, it's a bad situation. There are potentially people who need help. In addition, the nobles, the prince who uh, we know is safe in the Temple of Kain, he's looking for some way to help as well, and so is the queen. Which uh, came up with the idea, essentially. We should try and leverage that and be like, hey, help us this way, and, you know, stop feeling so sad for yourself and stuff. Uh, meanwhile, I managed, or Stufa managed to narrow down wherever princesses might be, so we have a, lo a vague location which we could potentially hit up. Uh, did I miss anything else? I don't think so. Right. Oh, actually, one thing. Kar uh, Karis and Reese also, I believe you discovered the locations of some of the camps that the uh, Sylphs and other, you know, anarchists yes. were in. Yes, the, the anarchist so groups, that yes. Which Kelvis was going to go out and help the militia do to gather to a meeting. Um, and on that point, Dark, I meant to ask you last session and then between sessions, and I kept forgetting. Um, could, seen as someone has been disguising themselves as Kelvis and fooling Mr. Militia Man, I forget if I got his name, but Mr. Militia Man, whatever, um, can she set up a new disguise with him and basically, basically say, look, if you see me, it's fake. I will now go around as like a white tiger, for example. Just so you, you could you could definitely do that. Just so you know, it's more than within your ability as a uh, well, as who you are. Yeah, and it's essentially a case of if I come to you looking like I am now, shoot me because I will be fake. If I come to you as a white tiger, don't shoot me because I will be real. <laughs> and now I just have to remember to always be in that disguise. Lots of chalk needed. A lot of chalk needed. Or flour. Either works. Until it rains. Flour gets messy in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, look where we look where we are! Karis uses her skills as a baker to disguise as a loaf of bread. <laughs> <laughs> loaf cat. 
it's just a reminder that we're on an island where it rains like 75% of the time. It's also really yeah. humid, so you're going to raise really well. <laughs> okay, this is now confirmed as loaf cat. I'm just saying what I'm just saying. Uh, yeah, Kara's ca- ca- covered in a flower, one fireball, and ooh, good. It'd be great. <laughs> okay then. So last time when we finished up, everyone had got ready for for to rest. The darkness had kind of risen for the day, and well, it was all good for the most part. Uh. I will say we should probably keep somewhat of a watch because we know that the cultists and stuff are aware of this location. Yes, we did say we would take watch. Specifically, Kelly said she would take last watch so then she can immediately prepare spells and such and then head out. That's fine. I'll assume everyone's taking watch then. Don't I have keep watch? I'm sure. I don't know, do you? I I can make this simplify them, but I swear to God I always use it. You you can shadow your location. I don't think you know the spell, do you? It's a. F- well, you a Ma- what? No, you weren't a Mega, so I'm thinking of Alana. It's a sorcerer. Yeah, it's a first level sorcerer spell. You could. Yeah, but I don't know, think I just don't know if you do. Yeah, it's just shadowy evocation called. I remember at the start of the campaign, I couldn't take it for some reason. No, yeah, because I, I prohibited it being on the, on the regular spell list. Oh. I mean, I believe we have like 50 people. That's true. Yeah, yeah we do have quite good. a few. Hello, everyone could just take a watch for half an hour. Yay! <laughs> Let's not do that. Okay. So everyone goes to rest for the evening. It's a quiet night, though, one that quickly devolves into heavy rain and storm clouds outside. The rain hammering down against the roof and walls. For some, perhaps, a com- perhaps almost comforting. For others, a fascination outside. But not for everyone. The constant pounding. The thunder. That's unsettling for some. Regardless, it is how the night goes. It's late in the night at the moment. Quite late. Most people were head down on whatever bedroll they had pulled out. And around this point, Adelaide, you have been designated on watch for the moment. You're currently outside, just kind of keeping an eye out, likely under the canopy of a slight overhang from the house, just to avoid getting absolutely soaked. Uh, before you continue on, I should probably not be he's not here yet. Oh, right, it's not. Okay, I'm going to change this then. It's fine. <laughs> I, I too forgot he wasn't here yet. Yeah, he currently has to be part of the military industrial complex. Damn it, Big B, you're already Amaya. fucking up the plot. <laughs> Amaya? Yep. You are actually in this position. So I hear a noise? Well, you're currently out, you're kind of, kind of, you know, just kind of watching out. You don't hear a noise, but instead you suddenly see a light. A bright blue light. Coming from three floors up in the tower. Hmm. Is that the ritual room? Yeah, I'll go investigate it. Going to up through the tower. Who's up casting magic at this hour? It's time for everyone should be sleeping. I swear to God, if it's near, I'm going to kill him. What? He's Why? Dead. I will kill again. him again. He will just reform. I can kill him many times. <laughs> That's pretty cruel. Yes. Amaya gets though to the ritual room, and kind of walks inside. Where there was once kind of just empty floor where you'd put the mirror down, there is now glowing runes that have appeared on the stonework, gently pulsating with a blue light. You don't see anyone in the room, though. Hello? Anyone here? You get no response. Uh, I guess I'll attempt to... I- Identify what's going on with the magic right now? That be our Connor spellcraft for this. Mm. Let's say spellcraft. 18 good enough? Hmm. Amaya takes her time kind of walking around the perimeter of the circle. She knows better than just sticking your hand into a magic circle without knowing what it is. Mm-hmm. But 
you kind of walk around the edge, trying to decipher the runes that you see appearing, the energy kind of pulsing across them. It's almost as if someone had spent time to set up a ritual here, but definitely no one's done that this evening. Perhaps it's something older, you question to yourself. But I don't actually identify it. And I can't quite figure out the details, though she can tell it's magic that's been here longer than any of you've been here. It's not something that's just been cast, like, now. A spell bound to the tower itself, maybe? Hmm. You know, Sitha doesn't need as much sleep as other people. I'm gonna go wake her up. Let me just double check something. Okay, that's fine. It's Tufa. <laughs> would you be in your hat at the moment, or would you have actually chosen to use a bed? Well, I can't use my hat at the moment because I used it earlier in the day, so I'd have to actually sleep in the bed for once. Gasp. In one in one of the little side rooms of the house. It's not particularly big, but you had a lot of people, so it wasn't really an option. But Amaya, what do you uh how how would you go to wake up Istufa right now? Uh basically just kind of Going up to her, going, "Hey, Susa, wake up!" Shakes the shoulder a bit. <laughs> no, Can don't insult. What? Ah, uh, Amaya? Ah, uh, why? No, it's late. There's magic going on, and I can tell it's been here the entire time we've been here. Doesn't seem malicious, but I can't tell what it's doing, and it has me concerned. As <sighs> if it starts to float. And Third floats up floor. the room. I, I like to imagine she doesn't even float Third upright. Floor. She just literally floats <laughs> horizontally up off the bed and uh, out the room. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Still kind of lying face down. Yeah. I'm just kind of more imagining like the entire bedroll kind of just floats up. Fortunately, no, I do not have that power. But still, won't go to a ritual room. As the horizontal is too far arrives at the top of the stairs. Oh, you can see this. A large ritual circle pulsating with a this kind of very soft blue glow. The energy kind of whirling its way around it. Interesting. Uh, I just have okay. Well, I wasn't going to use this it today anyway, as the foe will start casting spells. Finally I have a reason to use Arcane Sight. Arcane Sight, you say? Yes, we finally, finally, at ninth level, picked up the staple divination spell for the level. It's too far. You wield your arcane power and let the spell run into you. Your eyes glow a luminous blue as your eyes are opened to the world around you. Magical glyphs and runes appear everywhere. The secrets of the magic starting to be revealed as you can see the pulsations of magic. As easily as you would just an apple on the table. I should have picked this up for synergies. Okay. Go ahead and make me a spellcraft check. You're going to, you may, you'll always be using additional information due to the spell. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, interesting. Plus four on spells cast on you. Yes. Interesting. Also, if this is a cult, technically I get plus four towards a cult bullshit. I'm to stick my leg in for ritual circle and get a bonus. No. You kind of watch as the spell kind of runs. You kind of start, start deciphering the magic you see flowing. It takes you a few moments. But that's interesting. So this appears to be a rather, well, a rather potent... Um, Conjuration ritual that's running. Is he trying to summon something? Not quite. He's trying to summon us. The... No. The ritual that's running is quite interesting, and it seems to be one the tower has... It looks like by the way he's put it down, he's, he's managed up in such a way that, at least for a very long time, this ritual is basically set to run every single night on the tower itself. Well, not quite. It's on the it's on the inhabitants of the tower. It's... So who was smart and slept outside the tower? Why would the we... I... flavor of the... conjuration, by the way, is the healing subscore. Yeah. 
Can I tell to what, to what end? Yes. It appears this ritual here is designed to help, well, essentially fight off a lot of ailments that could possibly affect someone. Some of them quite interesting to you. Most notably, um, it makes people heal much faster than they normally would. But not only that, it helps fight away ability damage, it would. Ability drain. Helps helps help starve off negative levels. Help resist help resist even the penalties of aging. Oh. I suppose it's good for an aging wizard. Presumably at least, wizard. At least letting them ignore some of the penalties for the day. Could it affect things like corruption? It might. Well. Mechanically, I will let you know what this does. So each night you're resting whenever you rest in the in the inside the boundaries of the tower or the house. Um each night you you will heal double the number of hit points as usual, double the amount of ability score damage as usual. If you have any ability drain, you'll heal one point of that in the night, where you normally wouldn't heal any. If you stay in the ooh, tower ooh. for one week, you may heal you may automatically heal one up uh, one uh one negative level for free. This does not this is not um count against count against you casting the restoration spell on yourself. You ignore one level of age age penalties. So middle age is penalties for winning this tower. And for 24 hours after leaving it. Or well, after having rested in it, I should say. And also, if you are under the effects of any domination or compulsion effect or possession effect, um, you get an additional saving throw. No, my dominate person on myself. I mean, you, I mean, you can choose to fail your own saving throw. True. Yeah, you can always choose to fail a save. Quick, saved, quick question. It, it doesn't make a difference in this case, but it might in the future, depending on how things go. Uh, the whole healing double overnight, does that stack with long-term care? Quadruple. Quadruple, right. That's what I was hoping. It seemed, it seemed to be drawing power out, drawing power out of uh, one, of the, one, of the, um, one of the higher planes. I wonder which one. <sighs> Maya, why aren't we allowed to do the tower? Because the current owner is still alive, first and foremost. How would you even steal it? I need to write myself into his will as his uh, descendant. I mean, Estif would also know there is a ritual which literally teleports an entire building. It's true. I can't do it, but it's true. <laughs> yeah, the key point there is that she can't do it. I mean, I can just come um, back here. Yeah. It's a sp it's seemingly a ritual that he's managed to set up using various wizardries that essentially the ritual will keep casting itself each night until it runs out of material. I would desperately love this ritual, but I'm going to guess this is as expensive as balls. It does cost quite a bit each night. Yeah. You don't know exactly how much, but it's drawing materials from somewhere in the tower. Yeah, I mean, Presumably we know he has... All the barrels downstairs. Yeah. Estusa, that's your job for the day. Go do a full inventory of the tower, and then tomorrow we can compare and see how much it costs. Nah, I don't know if I care that much. <laughs> I mean, just like, you've done inventories before of, st of shops. It's true. I that sometimes it takes more than a day. I just, I don't want to. <laughs> I mean... Yeah. You also see more, however. But not from this ritual. Your archive sight is letting you see auras which had already passed in your normal vision. Is this the equivalent of looking up his message history? Who's he been texting? Well, I mean, firstly, of course, you you can see a variety of spells that you have all cast in the tower. Floating around. Which is fine. That happens. You also see something rather interesting. A sending spell that looks like it was cast today by someone in the tower. Hmm. Oh, actually, I shouldn't say sending spell, but a spell, most certainly. Some kind of communication spell. Hmm. I don't think any of us have done that. Is there anything I can do to analyze what or fervor? Of course. You're with, you're free you're free to roll me a be Arcana check on that one. Okay. Uh Carl, wake up and help me. Oop. Forty. Hmm. It's too far the always powerful. Yeah, yeah. There's one thing I have is knowledge. That what is... Hmm. 
It does appear someone in this tower has cast. Hmm. I can stare at it for a moment. It's not someone. It's not anyone particularly strong, but someone's cast a dream spell this evening. I mean, we were planning on doing that today. You would already know that Rhea had planned to cast one. But, but sure. this doesn't. This doesn't make sense. It's not strong enough to be. Also, yeah, in here. I don't find it's in here or on targeting someone in this place. One of the two. Oh, could, like, could this be the result of someone having slept, like, someone trying to target someone else with a dream spell, rather than casting it and sending a message yeah. themselves? Could have been. Point the dream spell has passed through here. But, but the only someone, generate... Like, someone not, it's someone who's not particularly strong, which kind of makes you question it for a brief moment. Just because usually a dream spell needs to be a lot more powerful than this. Yeah, which means an elf? Do we know any elves? Many. Yeah, but all the elves we know are kind of, like, big, strong. The question is, if it was targeting someone in here, did anyone have any weird dreams? <laughs> Fuck, we forgot Kaladel. Uh, couldn't it be Kaladel's kid? No, what I'm thinking is he's a detective. He'd probably be a good person to ask about this, but, uh... I mean, Aaron is an elf. That's the only thing I can think of off the top of my head of a low-level elf. We can also just go harass him and say, hey, go look at this. Yeah, but I don't know What's if we the, ever actually uh, got <laughs> is the thing. What was her name? I'm sure there was some knifey elf lady who was like an, an a spy or something. What was her name? Oh, uh, Pyra? Is it Zypher? Zy oh, that uh, one. Zephyr. Yeah. Zephyr, yeah. I, I know it's something elementally lined. I feel like we've contacted her recently for something, can't remember what. Just the, she suddenly came to mind. It's interesting it before, regardless. We, we, just... The only reason we knew about what she was doing is because she found out about a recent contact with the Moray Lock um, from our dear patrons, essentially. Stiffa's just going to not quite take the chance right now. She's going to cast the invisibility on Coral and just have him send him to scout out the tower. Okay. Make sure, that, sure of that. I mean, who knows? Maybe someone took a very quick cat nap, cast Dream to send a message to someone, and then, you know. Other than that, of course, your arcane sight is also revealing to you uh, that both Amira and Cora have uh, have arcane blood. Yeah. Oh, where's my sister? You know where she is? I'm gonna go spy on her. I want to see where her strongest spell is. You can do that. Sure. Tell me your secrets. As you, like, peek in and kind of look at her magical aura, she's absolutely fast asleep, like, mouth open, drooling. Oh god, Rhea. Oh, she's one of those that just snores constantly. I'm pretty sure she has like some kind of weird dream patron, so it makes sense. <laughs> um, well, you learn a few things. Firstly, you can learn um, so the high, so the highest level spell that she's capable of casting. Well, level, yeah. Let's see. It looks like she's capable of. It looks like she is capable of casting. Uh, as you look at it, uh. Double, sorry, just double checking what her sheet has not looked at in a while. It does look like she is incapable of casting sixth tier magic. Damn, I'm being beaten. You didn't know which. Time to get good. I'm trying. You also, however, see on course on as you kind of stare into her room, her orb of storms, which is just blindingly bright in your, in your vision. Not enough to actually stun you, but it's kind of thing where you shield your eyes a little bit. I want to use it so bad. There's also a few other magical trinkets on her. Ooh. There's her bag, which does appear to be some kind of magical storage device. Nice. A bag of holding equivalent, um, which is interesting. It, appear it appears one of her earrings is magical. As is her boots. And I need to buy myself some more magic clothing. So if we'll quietly close the door. She actually doesn't notice. Her perception is trash. Wait, we are sisters. Mm. Perception, perception trash even more than awake, so, you know, he's fine for... Um, uh, and you take, you take minutes to my sleep, it's understandable. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, I mean, it's terrible why she's awake, it's terrible why she's asleep as well, so... Good. But other than that, though, uh, you also have a few more minutes, so where uh, you're able to see through... see through the veil and see all types of magic. If there's anyone else you want to spy on. Not really. Or anything else you want to look at in the tower. Yes, so drawback. Uh, hmm. 
I guess I'll just quickly have a run through and see if there's any more ritual latent rituals running. Because we know there's the warding one, and obviously now there's this restoration one. Oh, actually, no better idea. If this dude's a wizard, he probably has like a vault or something where he's keeping all the secret powerful rituals. I want to see if I can find if he's hide, like hiding anything anywhere magically. Yeah. That sounds like a perception. I'm hope, well, <laughs> usually these things are hidden by like magic or, you know, mass dwemer, so usually it's a will save to force your way through the illusion. Yeah, and that is actually what it probably will be in this case. My god. Yeah. The point is you have the opportunity <laughs> to potentially break through because of your spell. Okay, quick. Do I have anything I can cast to boost my will save? I would just really hope to play off, you know, the family trait. That's fair. I mean, she, I mean, she might get, get in there and not be able to find anything because it's all invisible. Mm -hmm. true. Hold on. Guidance, you can boost saves, right? Yes. Okay. Ha me ha me ha! Ah, fuck. Wasn't it magic aura? It's the kind of spell where you really want to heighten it to your maximum level, wouldn't you? Yeah, it's only a first level spell, which, yeah, yeah if you can't heighten it, shit. As I said, if you're a mage who has heightened spell, though, you would totally use it on every time you cast it. <laughs> Just rocket the DC up. Especially if it's long term situation. Yeah, I mean, might as well not let anyone notice that you have magic items on you. I have an 18. It's true, it does find something. She Yay. Around. But it's not quite what it's super expected. But. God. It's just child. Firstly, no. Downstairs on uh, kind of the lowest level, you see a magical trap door. Ooh. And Maya doesn't see this. She just sees stone floor, but you see a trap door that you could just pull up. Yeah, I'm not going to touch it. That's probably trapped. Okay, I have to remember <laughs> mentioned. Well, you don't, well, you don't see any magical traps on it. Yeah, I'm not taking the chance. Actually, what's the worst case? It can be poison. I'm going to open it. Pull open the hatch. Amaya just sees you grab nothing. Yeah, Sifa has been giving a play-by-play -play to Amaya. And you see what seems to be a ladder going down somewhere. Quite dark down there, but you can go down. Time for I that like comedy it. scene where they like walk down behind the counter, looking like they're going into a basement, but there's no counter. Yeah, the point. The point is, what Amaya would just see is her just just like just sink into the floor. I do. I I. This is my hole, it was made for me. Amaya's <laughs> just going to try sticking her hand through the floor as if it were an illusion. You can you can try to force it with a will save. I believe I get a bonus on because this tooth is You do you get a plus five bonus because you have good suspicion that there might be an illusion here. So that's a seventeen. As your hand kind of passes through and suddenly you just see a hole. Hmm. Maya's going to follow, I guess. Well, I don't suppose you can make light. I pull up a hooded lantern and light it. Wow. Okay. This expert Magus can't even cast a light spell. Oof. Listen. I have better things to prepare than a light spell. True. And you kind of head down um, the ladder. Your arcane sight only lasting a little bit longer, but you've got a little bit left. <laughs> Run! <laughs> Run down the stairs, that always ends well. Firstly, you do recall people mentioning this, firstly. Huh, it's like a large like cove area under the building. Oh. You remember you were having way down here before with, like, the trash chute, but that was the only easy way that was found. But you see something else quite interesting, though, as your arcane sight is running. There is more than just a cove down here. There are multiple things down here that are magically unseen. But you can witness them at least for the brief next kind of minute. Quick, firstly, the flower there is a, on them. Firstly, you can see a small boat down there that's completely invisible. Okay, still like that. Yes, Wait, when we talk in boat, do we mean like robot? robot? No, not robot. quite. Not quite robot. Um, robot. It's, it's it's a it's a it's, you know it's a very small sailing ship. Okay. Also, am I? You should know by now that I don't actually mean I'm going to. Do it, I just want it desperately. But also, you said we could use anything within reason. As long as you we also brought it back. Yeah. You also see, however, down here, um, where am I to see the wall? You don't see a wall, you see a small... Um, you see just like part of the cave extend, and there being what appears to be a, work like a workshop built into the rock. 
which thankfully before the spell ends you are able to get to and pass through the door and get Mamaya to come in with you before the spell breaks. Quick Mamaya, through the wall. Again. Just run at it. Uh, Have faith. Okay. Oh, I no, not that wall. A breath. Sigh and go. Alright. Just kind of charge the wall a bit shoulder first just in case it does solidify so she doesn't break her nose. What, you mean you're not gonna do what small children glass mazes do and just run forehead first into everything? Yes. <laughs> I will not that's, be doing that. But that's, that's my favorite part! It is so funny to watch. Yeah, the workshop mm-hmm. you end into is quite interesting. Um, the first thing you the first thing you most certainly notice appears to be huh. It's a you see you can see basically loads of pipes that kinda of make you think of like steam work going on here. Huh. And you can see what appears to be a forge area that is glowing hot at the moment. It's getting heat from somewhere, but not magically. Huh. But huh, that's quite interesting. There seems to be a cauldron that also has like an like literally you can literally just flick a switch and it starts bubbling the cauldron. Ooh. It's getting steam from somewhere. That's quite cool. I imagine this Thusa is now carefully plotting out exactly how much she can fit in the hat. There's also book. Sh- there's also loads of bookshelves down here. Loads and loads of scroll cases inside. Little, you know, little, like loads of little cases with scrolls inside them. You know, Susa, we should probably ask the uh, owner of this tower, who um, designed it. Should uh, we? Well, you must admit that there are a lot of useful designs here. Oh no, it's certainly cool as all shit. It's just that I don't know if I necessarily want to tip off to him, but I'm aware that he has all this. Um, I will ask, out of uh, out of character, does any of this machinery ring any bells to Astuthas from the previous case we saw things like this? That you was mean, like, keeping a certain alchemist? person alive. Yeah, that was keeping a certain person alive. No, nothing like that. So, it's machinery, not similar of design machinery doesn't have a yeah i mean it, it's it's similar as much as it's using like lots of pipe work and such but doesn't resemble the same kind of process um but there are some things that are quite interesting down here as you kind of look around the workshop area the most obvious thing that kind of strikes you as you kind of step in is on the back wall um, there is a variety of seemingly magic items kind of hung up on there, like on little, you know, you know just you know, kind of hung up. Ooh. One that's particularly striking is this giant pair of wings on essentially like a backpack, like dibs. A giant pair of, of white, almost like angel like wings, but they're made of metal. Total dibs. You're not a dibs when you don't know you exist. Each each of each of the each of the silver uh, f- kind of silver f- uh, feathers that's there, each has a rune engraved into it. Okay, you know what? This is probably something we want to come back with. Uh, actually, that feels like a bad thing to say. Maybe we don't want everyone done here. As much as much as I do say I want to steal everything in my uh, yeah, I feel like if we take stuff out of here and we break it, we can't afford that kind of loss with you know points to wings. I feel like he'd be the kind of person to forgive us if we used it to, if we broke it when fighting the cult. We've had one conversation with him. I'm not willing to put that much faith in that. You also, yeah. other things you see down here include what appears to be a stave, or old, old wood with some kind of green crystal on top. Ooh, what's that? Stares intently at Crystal with Detect Magic. Stuff of Sure, why don't you roll me a Arcana check? I don't know why. I might my character sheet right now. I have to make more skill checks. Hot damn. It appears to be a Staff of Courage. Ooh. The staves can traditionally cast the following four spells. Bless, Remove Fear, Prayer, and Remove Paralysis. Am I just gonna pick that up? <laughs> you also know, you also know the sale price of it is about nineteen thousand gold. But I should say the purchase price is about nineteen to twenty thousand gold. So that well, well, this is certainly something that could prove useful to us here. 
It could, but I'm also, I'm swear we've actually taken anything that we can't possibly replace. There's also a tiny stone golem sitting on the shelf. That's still familiar. Like it looks, like it looks like this, like it's basically like as big as like a, like a, you know, you know basically, basically like, imagine like a small action figure just sitting there, but it's made of stone. And literally like a golem with a rune on its head and everything. Amaya just kind of waves her hand in front of it and says in uh, Elvish, if you are active, please raise your hand. It does nothing. Well, it's either inactive or it will only listen to the owner of this tower, which would be unsurprising. You know, I'm just not going to tempt myself anymore. I'm going back to bed. <laughs> I can do... Presumably this is not going anywhere, and if we desperately need to, I don't know, concoct a potion or forge a ring to chuck into a mountain, we can come back down here. Why would we throw a ring into a mountain? I don't know, I'm presuming the sound's like geothermically active, and this is where he's getting all the heat from. Okay, but why would we throw a ring into the mountain? You tell me. Anyway, next time. Wait, you're gonna leave the chamber. The cove looks far less, far more boring at the moment. Yeah, Maya's just gonna go back keeping watch, because it's still her shift. <laughs> Fair enough. The morning arrives. Everyone, please rest up. Yay! Okay, I need to leave one spell slot open so I can actually cast Scrang. I get all my health back, huzzah! Need to decide what spirit I'm going. And what bonuses you know, we see. get. As discussed, anyone who's injured restores back double their level in health. I'll do it for big. I'll do it for Adelaide. So that's 18, and that, I think that should bring us all up to full, or damn near to. Adeline is missing one hit point. Uh, for one hit point, I don't care enough to give long term care. Uh, how's Hazel doing for health after healing? Oh, she, she gets rid of all the burn at the beginning of the day. She's fine. Right, good. Yeah, her, 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 her damage came from burn, so. Good, good, good. She was gotten nuked the fuck out of, but. <laughs> what hex was I planning on going today? She's a good outsider fey uh, plant. Oh, I... she is good. I have a question. Yes. Yeah. Stuff wants to ask a favor of her sister. Your sister sips there, sipping tea in front of you. Rhea. Yes. I don't suppose you know any high tier summoning spells. She tilts her head for a moment. Perhaps. Is there any chance at some point, probably not today, because I imagine I'm going to be very busy, that we could facilitate a trade? Perhaps. Sweet. That's all I need to know. That comes to your attention. What how is that familiar? I'm going to presume it's either some item she can hide very well, or it's just, I don't know, it's probably like a massive beast that's just like, too big to see. <laughs> it's the island. The island is her patron. She must commune with the island. Yes. I mean, one hell oh, of a, she, I mean, one hell of a familiar. I feel like one of those weird ley line guardian people. I think they just like commune with rocks and shit. I mean, they commune with the ley lines. They, they, their familiar is the world. The world, or oh. big be here for it. Okay, let's see. So if we're going to be potentially attempting to break a bunch of people from being possessed, as much as I don't like using slumber, I feel like slumber is probably useful for non lethally taking people out. You may think that it's a cheap option, but it's also the most I mean, the, it's the least lethal option. It's inc yeah, it's, inc it's an inc incredibly great non lethal tool. I'll take it. Okay. Uh, would I have been able to do the dream spell to the prince? To get him that message, you would have been able to, yes. Do I need to roll anything for it, or did it, or is it no. just fine to go? Okay. The, the message will go through. Boo boo, Quincy, Wincy, help us. Uh -huh, so the dream we were detecting was Cadmi's or Hazel's, whoever's. No. <laughs> Too weak. Yeah. And it sounds like Ray, Ray was the one casting the dream spell. It would have been way stronger than that. It's probably not one of my apprentices, because AV cannot cast dream and B. Well, mostly AV cannot cast dream. 
You know them fairly well. Yeah. And if they really want to blend in, they'd use the spell that I know they can use, which is Minor Dream. The only thing that'd be kind of weird is, why are you sleeping here? Or well, maybe Hestia's evil. What do you know, Hestia? What have you done? <laughs> I hear no arguments. Hestia is clearly the evil one. I'm drinking milk. <laughs> That's such a thing the that most evil beverages. I said this drink smokes I accuse her of war crime. Okay, okay, first of all, that's her mother. For her. I feel like you you together get the charge of war crime. Not that any of us are kind of innocent of that. Has he was a cat at the time? Hi, Big B. About time. <laughs> Hello. Go make that bread. Or, uh... No, we, we, we've, so. we've already gone over this. Uh, Just cover cowis and flour. I was making sandwiches. Breakfast sandwiches. Okay, so yes, there was bread. Yes, there was. But the reason I'm not as early as I thought I would be is that I had to wash bacon pans. Bacon pans? No! Washing any kind of grease pan is a big pain in the ass. It wasn't that. It was the fact that there was uh, two dozen of them. Oof. You're gonna get very good at it one day, and then you'll just be able to do it in a flash. Dark. Yeah. What spirits could I channel at this current location? I know the Archmage. Hmm. That is a good question. Is there a spirit for toilet pits? I, I'd argue there's probably some religious spirit here, considering, you know, the anti demon ward was powered by the religion. Hmm. That's kind not of necessarily art. how spirits work, though. <laughs> I I declare it is. Not in that way, but... There are... Well, there aren't many spirits here. So there is the Archmage spirit, which you've dragged along. She's been hanging out with me. There is one other spirit you could channel, though. Which you didn't know where it... You didn't know where this feeling really came from, except probably as Tufa reveals it later today. Oh... But you could, you could, in theory, pull out the champion from that ship. Hmm. Like, the ship's invisible. He's not going to notice if we steal it. I just only one day walk up the gangplank and fall through. I need a <laughs> check. <laughs> yeah. I love, okay, we're not stealing the ship, but we are moving it five feet. Like, oh, yes, I know I put the gangplank between these two rocks. It takes an hour. Mm. What, to channel a spirit? Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, you're, everyone needs to attack spells, so you're going to have an hour. Yeah, I was thinking about holding on to it and not channeling a spirit at the moment, but... Mm. Up to you. I'll stick with Archmage, but I'm going to be changing the spells. Okay. Do we get anything for weirdness? Plus two damage from, uh, on spell damage roll. So, no. If you if you participate with me. Let's all hold hands. So you are channeling the champion? Yeah, the Archmage. Plus two damage with spells. Plus two damage with spells. Awesome. I will make a note of that and stick it right here on my screen. <laughs> well, not not the actual screen itself, but like, you know, the... I'm sorry, but if you're going to be participating with this seance, you need to be wearing one of these hats. As Gabby will place a big pointed hat on your head. Uh, Kelvis can't benefit from this. She doesn't need to participate. I feel like Amaya wouldn't question this. Just prepare a forehead. Whatever, whatever the spirits lies, apparently it involves pointy hats very well. Archmage. Well, no, no, okay, I get it. I'm sorry. I'm not saying well. You are an Archmage. I'm sorry. Anyone have magical secrets to share? on, Amaya. Don't be weak. Wear the hat. Wear the hat. Amaya has already been wearing the hat. Oh, I thought you said you weren't taking place. Or taking no, place. I said I was taking place. And... Calorie said she wasn't. But that's just because, you know, she can't benefit from it, and she has people to go see. If I hit yeah. someone with versus good and evil, does it counteract uh, possession? No. Why are you worried I'm going to get possessed? I'm not. Is Cat me? No. <laughs> is in fact one of the very specific clauses of it. That as long as you have that on there, you cannot be possessed. And if I'm right, it either suppresses the possession 
or you get a new save against it. Oh, it from controlling the target. Okay. There, that's it, yeah. But it's just a... Yeah, okay. If you are not possessed at the time of casting, then you can't be possessed, though. Right. So if you plan on doing any sort of possession-y things, or messing with other people's possession, you might want it. Amaya, I believe. Mm. Mm-hmm. This morning, um, as both of you are perhaps uh, just having a nice little chat in the morning, you know, you've got your hour of preparations to do, hour of kind of just getting everything ready. Someone uh, makes their way over and catches both your attentions. Mm. Mm. It's the half elf that you rescued. Oh, hey, you. He appears. He appears to have managed to get to his feet and uh, has woken up for at least some point. It's his dream. He still looks pretty emaciated in many regards, but he's on his feet. Can I just first say thank you to both of you? Yeah. yeah. Of course. I think nothing of it. I don't know how long I've... I don't know how long they had me there. Well, not long enough to kill you, thankfully. Not for a lack of them trying. <laughs> Sorry, just, they definitely tried. Yeah, fair. But, you survived. And now you made it here. Uh, bad news, though. How long uh, who are you? He, he covers up his eyes immediately. As if, like, he just, just, oh. stared, he just stared at the sun or something. Um, odd. Okay. First off, she's not a harpy. Secondly, she's a fae. And very spiritually attuned. So if you've got I weird, can tell weird that. eyes... Okay, you do have weird spirity eyes. I thought you might. Hi! Padme's... Sorry, look, give me a moment. I'm not used to people having to be blinded by me. Uh... Padme's officially at the power she'll... level where she she'll blinds to people. Calm down as much as she can. Get her aura under control. Well, at least the spirit she's channeling is powerful enough that it can completely blind them. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yes, we have not had time to warn you about the more eccentric members of our party. Are any of them elf? Do any of the other what, rest of them have a spirit that big? Uh, no. I think at least are very talented. If you're any bright I swear you're an archangel or something. I have wings. And I can't hit things with the mace pretty hard. <sighs> but anyway, I said, thank you for saving me. I'm in no shape to fight at the moment, but if you need anything. <laughs> well, try. first, go get some food. Then we shall talk about what you know. I've already eaten what I can. Well then, any information you can provide us about the cult of, um... I believe you said we should not name them, Adeline? Uh, yeah, you don't want to say the name of it. They're who they worship. Right. Makes it really awkward to talk about them. Yeah, mm-hmm. things have not been going great outside your cage, from what I understand. Yeah, see... They have, they have made their plays and their war, and they are presently trying to take over the island. We need whatever information you can give us about them. About the cult? Um, no, yeah, yeah, I can do that. Cool. I, no, I can do better than that, actually, I think. Oh. He kind of shakes his head for a moment. Thankfully, even if I'm physically a mess, I can still do this much. Hey, nice. As he's going to go ahead and you, um, you start, you start seeing a magical rune start appearing in front of him, and then a couple. Yeah, uh, I didn't have detect magic up already, so I'm just going to have to roll straight up spellcraft to see what he's doing. Make it yeah. definitely sure. Do his thing. It's more about my curiosity. The spell he's casting is not is not too advanced of a spell. Uh, one moment. Double checking which one it is because I'm I know I'm going to get mixed up because there's a few of them. Okay. Sorry, sorry I just had to double check his spell section. As he casts, he's casting two spells here. The first one he casts, um, the first one he casts is a. Nice, simple, um, 
a silent image spell. And the second that he casts is a ventriloquism. As he begins to, with what is a scary amount of detail actually in these illusions, starts to replay what seems to be a conversation between one of the harpies and seemingly a cold. Interesting. Ooh. It's scarily accurate though on the detailing. Far more than you normally do. Well, obviously, it's whatever this guy's specialization is. As you see, kind of a ha, kind of a ha, uh, a kind of free harpy standing, uh, kind of la- kind of standing landed in their courtyard with two, uh, one seemingly one of the cultists and one of the uh, kind of the dark knights there. As the kind of as they kind of seemingly are speaking in this really hissed voice, the harpies are, but they're seemingly um. As they, um, as they seem to be discussing trades of magic uh, with each other right now. Seemingly preparing some kind of large ritual. Well, you're already kind of aware of this. They're planning to do the ritual to break the sky. So you can definitely hear a lot of details being exchanged back and forth. Seemingly they came to the harpies to learn the secrets of the ritual. Hmm. That makes sense. As you hear them discussing it back and forth. Something which you can do- definitely jo- jot down all the details of if you want to. Oh yeah, definitely. Because it's fairly comprehensive, what they're discussing. But there is more there that's quite interesting as well. Um, as they're discussing back and forth, um, it seems that the Harpies were also to gather some excess sacrifices for them as well and drop them off at the, um, drop them off at the base for the cultists. Which, while they don't really tell you the location here, um, it does appear that the harpies, to, the harpies were to um, come in disguise to avoid scaring the local populace. How do you Got disguise because... a harpy? Magic. That's quite some magic. Not... So there's a local populace they don't want to upset. That is a very large hint as to their location. Got to be close to a settlement, right? Yes, mm-hmm. very close. If and probably they have to hard. go in disguise. Possibly inside of the settlement itself. Yeah, so the discussions kind of go back and forth for a little bit. Mm. It also it also appears that they've erected some kind of powerful wind barrier at the at the um at, at whatever location they've held up in. Rude. Powerful storm barriers to keep people out. You better be, better be prepared to dispel it in some way, or have some way to counterspell it. I mean. You might. Tentatively find a way to get past it. Well, I can think of at least two ways we could do that. Yeah. After about 20 minutes of actually conversation here through the spells, um, repeat casting of ventriloquism to keep up with the kind of video comes to an end. Excellent. Nice. The man kind of, kind of sighed a little bit. I could have rubs his forehead. It was, also rather distracting. it was also rather distracting for all of you during that, because you could see all kinds of things moving around in the background as well, small little motes and spirits. Mm. Which you, know, you guys are not used to seeing. For Cadby, it looks very natural. Mm. That's all I know, but hopefully that'll help. That was yeah, yeah. a lot of very useful information. Thank you. The fact that you could, remember, the fact that you could somehow memorise all the details of an entire ritual, though, is rather impressive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you didn't see any spell. Definitely a psychic caster, though. That much you've confirmed already. Hazel's gonna sneak up behind him and poke him in the back of the head and cast Lester Restoration. You can do so, as everyone just sees he he suddenly looks slightly less gaunt. Ah, dear. Thank you, Hazel. She gives it to you a thumbs up and sort of slinks back into the wall that she came out of. Where did you find him? Oh, wait, you found him in the harpy place. Yep. Yeah. We found their we found their nests and we decided to Hey, they've got a prisoner. Let's take him. Hmm. My job was to be a, my job is as a scout to go around. Hey. Works. Go to your job. I mean I hope so, yes. They they've always said I've got a good memory. Though so that's not quite the case, but Actually, Excellent. good question. Good question. Who's they? 
Oh, just this. Just the ranger core, that's all. That's all? Huh? Sadly, no, know who the ranger core is. I mean, you imagine he's likely referring to, um, well, you 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 can you roughly guess who he's referring to, which is probably just the island's main range. I mean, it has multiple kind of range ranger groups, but like collectively, their job is just mostly just to kind of maintain the roads and roads and through through the jungle and try to you know keep keep you get keep keep evil people from getting eaten by beasts, or if they do get eaten by beasts, uh, recover the bodies. So, in other words, the people. Some of the people that Adeline looked up to whenever she was growing up. Probably. Yeah. That, you're part of the Ranger Corps. That's really, really, really cool, you know. Don't discount yourself. I mean, I've never been particularly high rank, though. Yeah, that's fine. The footmen are the ones who, who protect people the most anyway. Tell us your name. We'll see if yes. we can do something about that when this madness is over with. Kind of pauses, he kind of pauses for a moment looking at him. He's, he's kind of staring at Adeline for a moment as if he's trying to like do I know you? Uh, okay, name Adeline Willowpeak you might know me depends on how old you are I've heard of you heard of me okay, yeah. okay. Someone te people telling stories of you when I was younger the great trouble me okay, I didn't think I made that much of an impression what sort of stories, though? Um, most, mostly your, mostly your antics out hunting in the forest. Okay, that yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, like one of them mentioned something about wasps. No, not a good story. <laughs> but yes, they, yes. They, they didn't really share any details. I'm glad they didn't, because it's not a good story. Not a fan. Still, I do like. I do like that I'm in stories too. It's nice. It's also interesting to see that I still people still remember me more than just people that knew me directly. It was most. It was. It was mostly just our main commander who spoke about you. But wait a second. Who's your commander? Uh, the GM does not remember the name of the commander, but I will. But I will let you. I will have to look for it later. But I will let you know. It is a name that Adeline would recognize. You remember him being in the Ranger Corps. When you were a girl. That old fart. He's got to be pretty old at this point. Yeah. If he's still alive. Is he still around? No. Oh. About four or five years ago. Oh. Shame. Well, uh, I guess had he die? Mm. Mostly peaceful. That... Bit, too much, bit too much alcohol on him, but peaceful. No, uh, if anything, that's uh, that'd make it more peaceful for him. That's a shame. Still, I'm glad to hear that he remembers me. Yes, I did cause a bit of trouble for him. Past, I will definitely wasn't rescued by him at least once or twice. It takes a lot to learn how to be a huntress on an island full of very large creatures. I mean, and tigers. tigers. I mean. You tell us. We're the, we're the ones who have to train everyone and get trained. Yeah. Fair point. Oh, it's nice to find semi-kindred spirits as well. So, how... That's a good question, though. How did a scout get kid captured by harpies? A scout of the Ranger Corps, no less. You guys kind of train again to, like, deal with those then whenever they, like, had their little incursions. Or whenever they raid a town. It's a bit of a long story, but it wasn't just Harpy. Ah, okay, that makes sense. Cult is backing them up, I bet. There's something backing them up. Some things. Some... I don't know if it was. I don't know. I don't know if they were cultists or not, but what were they like? For a brief moment. Well, I mean, all I saw was a giant bird. Oh, okay. And I mean, giant bird. Ah, it, was like a, okay. it was like a rock, but it wasn't. Can't have been any natural rock. <laughs> yeah, I guess if there was magic flowing through it, I could see it from a mile away. Yeah, if that's the case, then probably was cultists and their pets. 
Fascinating. Well, glad you're alright, and thank you very much for what you showed us, and everything you've told us, really. And again, we didn't get your name. Sorry, Lions. Lionswell. Lionswell. Well, I guess you'd probably best to be heading back home now, and... No. Or meeting back up with a ranger corps and help. I'm there. in no state to fight at the moment. You should. I'm true. You should stay here. If we can secure a route to your ranger corps, we can think of transporting you. Alternatively, we are hiring. As this dude walks out of nowhere, appears out of a closet. Hi, I see. 